gardens are these amazing living things. They're constantly changing, not only from one season to the next, but sometimes it seems like from one day to the next. And I'd like to think that my understanding of gardening and gardens is also changing and evolving. And I remember a few years back having a sort of aha moment or a wake-up call where my garden brain sort of uh, expanded twofold. Um, I had sent out KGI's newsletter which goes out around the world and in which we provide information about how to garden and how to prepare food and things like that. And I got a very polite reply back um, from a gentleman in South America, in Guyana, and he said, you know, Roger, we certainly appreciate all the work that you're doing, but I want you to understand that while gardens for you and for other people in the United States and some wealthy countries might be about getting that really fresh salad on the table or that, you know, absolutely delicious uh, batch of pesto, for people here in my community, gardens are about survival. Now, as it turns out, um, the author of that email was a priest who was working with a group of uh, single mothers who were living in poverty and who were desperately trying to come up with um, a way of putting fresh, healthy food on the dinner table each day. And that really did shake me up and it made me realize that you know, gardens can be very, very powerful. They can be about saving lives. They can be about um, feeding people who are hungry. And, you know, we went on later to find a way of working with that group in Guyana to provide them with um, some support. Um, and, of course, there are countless examples like that around the world where gardens are really playing a critical role in feeding people, keeping them healthy, keeping them grounded, connecting them to the earth. And I think that's pretty cool.